Welcome back to Built to Last. I'm Ted Bennett. And today, we're in Ypsilanti, Michigan, checking out the city's water tower that was constructed in 1890 and it's still in service today. Public water, safe for drinking and washing, readily available for firefighting. In the late 1880s, Ypsilanti, Michigan recognized the need for sanitation and protection from fire and decided to improve the availability of public water. At the time, most water came either from the polluted Huron River or from private wells, and not everyone had access and fires were a real danger, constantly threatening to destroy entire cities' wood frame construction. To design their water system, Ypsilanti looked to the region's most well-known hydraulics engineer from Kalamazoo, W.R. Coates. Coates was an outspoken and passionate advocate for public water supporting the pure water, pure air movement. Coates earned his professional standing working on the Kalamazoo water system design and construction in the late 1860s. Learning from some of the mistakes that Kalamazoo made, Coates developed his own brand of water distribution theory. Those early water systems, like that constructed by Kalamazoo, relied upon pumping alone to deliver water with varying pressure, trying to keep up with demand. Elevated storage was not part of that early concept. By 1889, Coates settled upon the modern water distribution system concept of pumps sitting on one side of town, pumping water across town to a reservoir located on the far edge of the city. Coates implemented this concept in Ypsilanti with the main pumping station located near the river and a reservoir located on the west end of the city. That early reservoir in Ypsilanti has come to be known as Old Stone Tower. The elevated storage concept was a major efficiency improvement, allowing for one shift of operators to fill the tower from midnight to 4 p.m. using pumps powered by water turbines. At 4 p.m., with the tower full, the turbines could then be switched over to power the city's electric light system at night. Locating Stone Tower on the far end of town permitted a fire inside the city to be fought with water coming from both the tower and the town pumps, thereby doubling the volume of water available. Coates called this providing, wa providing water from the front and the back. Other cities like Kalamazoo without storage relied upon a fire alarm being given to call for the pumps to be cranked up to deliver more pressure to feed hydrants. Coates chose the intersection of Washtenaw Avenue and Cross Street on purpose. This was the highest point in the city. By putting the tower at the highest point, the total height of the tower needed to reach the system pressure was reduced. Think ground closest to water level saving construction costs. Stone Tower was a departure from standard methods of water storage at the time. What little storage did exist in systems was in the form of standpipes. A standpipe is just that, a pipe stood on end. Coates called out the inefficiency of standpipes as the most ridiculous of all things because the standpipe only provided pressure protection with very little wa water volume stored. Stone Tower, by contrast, stores over 250,000 gallons of water which Coates selected to keep a day's usage in the air, protecting against equipment failure. The construction of Stone Tower was also ahead of its time. Today, we see towers that utilize different materials of construction to take benefit of each material's strength. We call these composite tanks, with concrete doing the vertical support and steel plate forming the storage vessel. Coates was 130 years ahead of this trend, using Joliet limestone for the tower riser. The limestone, strong in compression, was selected for durability when compared with brick. By using the natural material with resistance to Midwestern freezing weather, the tower with a four-foot thick wall at the base really was built on rock-solid foundation. The design of the tower itself is more complex than the circle I envisioned before going inside. Instead, the circular shape is reinforced with three parallel interior walls spanning from one side to the other. These walls enhance the rigidity of the structure and ties the entire structure together. Similar to the composite tank I mentioned, Coach chose a riveted steel tank to form the water storage, but he also recognized that the stored water needed to be protected to maintain quality. So Coach designed a wood frame with shake shingles to cover the tank and protect the water from birds and insects. Stone Tower was constructed with 100% local labor, and the pride of these local people working on the tank is evident in some of the personalized touches that these workers put into the tank. Three crosses were placed in the tank walls as good luck charms by the laborers. To give the tank a unique visual aspect, the workers also placed unauthorized windows into the column walls. Coates was furious with the changes to the tank's aesthetics, worrying that the windows could introduce frost concerns for the 16-inch riser pipe. Coates' fears remained unrealized 
And there's something to local people taking pride to construct something special for a community they clearly care deeply for. There were also some changes to the tower's design contributing to the longevity of this structure. The tower was raised an additional 10 feet to a 147 foot height to offer four additional PSI pressure. The raising of the tower only added 10% of the construction cost, but it's certain the city got its money's worth on those four pounds of pressure, serving the city for so, so long. Originally, Coates called for wood beams to support the tank, but relented that a construction change switch to steel was a good call. The change to steel beams was key and a decision that we can be thankful for because without that change and wood beams in a damp environment, I don't think we're talking about Stone Tower today. Heady choice. Coates provided the concept and the design, but the local community of Ypsilanti took it from there, leveraging community pride and enthusiasm to build both Stone Tower then to maintain it for the next 134 years. Knowing that each stone was placed in Stone Tower by a local resident makes this amazing structure all the more special. The spirit of Ypsilanti keeping Stone Tower strong today is clearly as passionate now as it was back then. So here we can see that solid design when married with community pride is an unbeatable combination. A combination that has made Stone Tower built to last.